What's up, beautiful people? This will be a new anti-E4 opening to most of you guys. And to be specific, I'm about to show you the surprise weapon against the Spanish, also known as the Rui Lopez. And before I show you some cool traps and tricks, guys, let's be honest. We all don't like the Spanish. In fact, most of you guys who are watching don't even know the right way to defend against the Rui Lopez or the Spanish. It seems to be very boring, non-committal in nature, with no chances to set some crazy traps and again before i continue i want you guys to do me a favor simply turn on the bell notification icon after subscribing so that you don't miss any of my future uploads because i've noticed that most of you guys don't even know i have many great videos on my channel with lots of traps in them so now back to the real lopez after bishop b5 white's main idea is to take the defender of the e5 pawn at the right moment for example if you carelessly continue playing without thinking bishop e7 just saying white can simply take your knight and on the next move win a free pawn on e5 that's the main goal moreover 90 percent of spanish players know their theories very well and so here is the surprise weapon for you guys immediately you see bishop b5 instead of going into the berlin defense or the classical variation or even the morphe defense which every spanish player is prepared for i suggest that you change your opening and start afresh <laughs> crazy right surprisingly enough this is also playable in classical tournaments and it's called the retreat variation which most people don't know about and i first saw this in the game between wei he and fang yu Zhen from china i guess theory says white should also retreat his bishop back to f1 and guess what again you can simply go knight c6 i mean you have limited options as black this is white's game so let white decide what they want to do especially if they are higher rated than yourself if they still want to stick to the rule of pace just retreat your knight once again and maybe this may result into an early draw believe it or not we see these things happening at top level oh my teeth i find this to be funny you guys but anyways the whole idea is that after you retreat your knight back to its initial square if white takes your pawn on e5 which seems to be free this is when you can go queen g5 attacking the knight directly and indirectly attacking the bishop on b5 because <laughs> if white goes back you can simply take that free bishop right so they don't have to do that by the way if they defend everything like this just an example you don't even have to take on g2 due to queen f3 right so the best you can do is just to take the f4 pawn and you are safe look at these weaknesses maybe the best white can do is to play knight to f3 allowing you to take the e4 pawn with check and after this you take advantage of this development so that next you can take back with tempo on e4 besides this and this is coming anyway going back to the position of our interest after knight takes e5 and queen g5 if white plays pawn to d4 defending their knight zoom your eyeballs and realize that your queen is also under attack so this is when you can take on g2 and this kind of disturbs the typical Rui Lopez plan of castling short once the dust settles so seeing that you are threatening to capture white will be forced to play queen f3 and since you don't have any safe square to go to you can simply exchange and play the Karakan defense <laughs> with pawn to d5 pending if bishop f4 well you can simply go pawn to d6 because it doesn't make sense to go bishop b4 check first due to pawn to c3 and white is going to be up a tempo after rook g1 attacking your g7 pawn even if you play g6 they have all the time in this world to develop all the pieces and your bishop is misplaced bishop a5 and bishop b6 only makes sense if you still have the queens on the board so due to this you want to play pawn to d6 by the way if d5 you have bishop d7 and if pawn to h3 for example stopping you from you know developing your bishop you can just go knight to f6 normal development attacking the pawn e5 be happy to take if knight c3 see guys the whole idea is just to take this game straight into the end game there's nothing that is happening here simply castle short this is okay as well it will take a bit of time for white to stabilize so what you are doing with this is you are asking white to just play chess without following any theory so this would just be a game of squares anyway again after e4 
e5, knight f3, knight c6. I said once you see bishop b5, it's time to change your mind. Because if white takes your pawn on e5, queen g5 simply equalizes the game somehow. And don't listen to what Stockfish says. Guys, Stockfish is very childish. So after pawn to d4, queen takes g2 sends the game straight into an end game without any problems at all. So that's how you punish your Spanish opponents. Organize rhyme. Anyway, but if you don't like the idea of exchanging queens early, you can also try this other line, especially in blitz and rapid. After knight takes a5, instead of going queen g5, you first of all tease your opponent by going knight f6. First of all, if bishop c4, you have pawn to d5, no problem. But here is the reasoning behind knight to f6. It creates an impression as if we are interested in this pawn. And once your opponent defends, just know they have lost the game right in the opening because you can now simply go pawn to c6 like what you do in the mod Magambit. <laughs> So regardless of what white does, bishop a4 or bishop c4, you can simply go queen a5 check and end up winning a free piece. For example, after something like knight c3 or pawn to c3, you can just take. And not so fast, let me show you the best way to continue in case white becomes aggressive for nothing like they play pawn to a4, just go queen h5, just go for an early queen trade since you are already up a piece. No need to retreat your queen, otherwise things may hit back so badly because of this strong center that white has. White has to exchange queens, otherwise if they play something like castle short out of frustration, you can just go ahead and trade off your queen and after something like rook takes, you start attacking immediately pushing that piece further away. Let's say pawn to a4, simply go pawn to b4, chasing that knight back as well. And then you go pawn to d5, gaining more central space. If pawn to e5, I wouldn't mind going forward, even though knight g8 is the main move, because after pawn to h3, I have a place where to put this knight. I'm also inviting white to overextend his pawns like this. And if anything, I still have knight g8 and pawn to h5, just to break that pawn chain on the king side. So this is how you play this improved Mortimer Gambit. But let's just say white doesn't play pawn to d3 after you go knight to f6. What if they defend their pawn with knight c3? Well, now it is your turn to play the Spanish defense. Because <laughs> you just want to get rid of the defender of this pawn. And once again, the engine may not like this, but at human level, what can they do? Maybe just cast a short, but you can also put your king to safety first. And after something like pawn to d3, you simply go pawn to d5 because that's what you've always wanted to do. And this will simplify the game for you. The thing is, white won't make correct moves all the way through. That's not how human beings play their chess. Anyway, back to our position once again. What if white plays bishop c4? I mean, these are moves which your opponent won't figure out easily because it makes no sense at all developing a bishop and then undeveloping it somehow just to gain some initiative. Here you can just go pawn to d5. After e takes d5, instead of taking back, you treat this pawn as your shield and develop a minor piece behind it, attacking the knight so that after something like pawn to d4, knight to f3, you put your king to safety and start playing chess. Bishop g5 may be played, for example, you can go pawn to h6. After bishop h4, you go knight bd7 and next you want to unpin your knight and continue with life. Okay, let's say white becomes aggressive with a move pawn to f4. Well, the beauty is that you can just unpin your knight if you want to or simply go knight b6. I mean, attacking something. If bishop b3, let's say you can try to buy time on the bishop. Let's say pawn to a4. I mean, you can even take. Guys, it's not easy for a human opponent to come up with correct moves all the way through. It's only Stockfish that understands the complexity of this position and the long-term advantages for white in this position. So if bishop takes, you can simply go bishop before check and after c3, you take the light squad bishop and again Stockfish says white should not take this bishop but rather just cast a short. But here is what your human opponents would do most of the times. Maybe they will take this knight and now see what has happened. The game is now equal. This is what humans do. You can simply take back and attack that knight. It's hard to understand. Maybe they will play knight to f3 to save everything. But here is when you play rookie 8. Things have now changed. I mean, even if white 
protects your bishop instead of your knight, you can simply go queen takes g2 attacking the rook. And even if they protect it this way, you can go for the other pawn attacking this other rook. Bishop takes f6 doesn't make sense because you can simply take a free rook on a1. This is nothing guys. You have queen takes b1 check and give another check before playing pawn to g6 if you want to. So white has to be wise enough. It's not easy you guys for your human opponents to figure out what the correct moves are in these kinds of positions. Another line that you may face is this line where white castles short immediately instead of playing pawn to d3, knight c3 or bishop c4. White can also just castle short. You can even see from the evil bar that Stockfish is confused. What is it that is happening? Why did you give up a free pawn? Well taking the pawn back would be bad. So the main move here is bishop e7 and castle short then start chasing this pawn. Quick development is the key by the way in the retreat variation of the Rui Lopez. You can also go pawn to c6 in this position because it only takes one bad move for you to equalize the game and win back something here black should suck his knight that's according to stockfish for example knight takes king takes bishop b3 check then you go pawn to d5 if pawn to e5 you simply retreat your knight and after queen f4 check king g8 solves everything and you can see from the evil bar position is very much equal this is a drawn end game bishop e6 is coming you develop your dark squad bishop h6 most importantly you can also bring back your queen to exchange some pieces in these kinds of positions you don't want your queen to be far away from the king this defense is very important anyway now what if white doesn't just take the pawn after you retreat your knight well well and good in fact believe it or not this is what stockfish suggests stockfish doesn't like knight takes e5 due to queen g5 so the top engine move is castle short in this position now this is when you can go pawn to c6 that's our idea and after bishop c4 you simply go pawn to d6 and the moment you see pawn to d4 you can go into the rat defense which i showed you guys last year and you know what to do or simply go into the brazilian defense with queen c7 i like this leaving an option to develop my bishop if de i can simply take back with no problems at all and if knight g5 is played double attacking my pawn on f7 i have knight h6 let's just say queen h5 white wants to be very aggressive you can simply go bishop d6 just defending the e5 pawn in advance i mean in case of anything by the way knight takes f7 sacrifice doesn't work because we have too many defenders and let's say if white tries to be aggressive with a move pawn to f4 ha, we can simply take i mean that's just a free pawn bishop takes makes no sense because we can simply take back and be up a piece for nothing even if g3 comes we have bishop takes g5 winning a piece once again everything is under control the best white can do here is just to take that bishop back and then we cast a short end of line so once again after queen h5 in this line just go bishop d6 and everything is under control i don't even know what else white can do here maybe bishop e3 but even with that move i mean you can just cast a short with no any problems everything is under control if h3 may be stopping you from going bishop g4 or knight g4 whatever you can just simply go king h8 and pinning your f7 pawn next you want to go pawn to f5 given a chance if knight c3 you can even play some relaxing moves such as queen e7 just as i mentioned earlier in these kinds of positions you want your queen to be closer to the king in case of anything but in this case white has no any serious attack coming once again if pawn to f4 comes you can simply go pawn to f6 and stockfish supports you fe doesn't make sense either because of queen takes e5 i mean these are all logical moves now the knight is pinned to the queen somehow bishop f4 i mean what is this queen d4 check wins the bishop for free this is all for today you guys let me know what you think about this surprise weapon against the spanish i believe it is a cool surprise weapon and even though stockfish doesn't really agree with the opening moves it's hardly easy for any human 
to keep up with the correct moves that Stockfish wants. Stockfish sees the possibilities in the end game and that's what humans are not good at. Anyway, if you want to learn more serious stuff, you can follow me on Patreon where I post other premium content and other study materials that I can't post on YouTube. Thank you for watching this video once again. Hope to see you soon in my next video. Until next time, bye bye.